Daf Kuf Amud Beis. We'll begin Kuf Amud Aleph, three lines from the bottom. Amar Rav Toich Gimel Rabbanon Sarochanoch Al Gabi Mashu. Rav says that according to the Rabbanon, according to the Rabbanon who do not hold of Klutu, they do not subscribe to the principle of Kluta Kamishuncha. That's something that's passing through the Rishus Harabim is considered resting on the ground. So you need a Hanach, and therefore, according to the Rabbanon, even if it's Toich Gimel, even if it's within three Tvachim of the ground, it still has to rest on something, even if it's a small item, even if it's something which is minute, but it has to come to rest on some object in order to be considered Munach. In order for us to say that this is considered to be landed, there's a Hanach, and he would be Chayim, or that it was a from that place and it would travel from that place into another Rishus that there's an Akira from there, it has to have Hanoch al Gabi Mashu even if it's within three of the ground. We don't say that if it's within three of the ground, it's considered landed on the ground unless it has Hanoch al Gabi Mashu. Yossi Marai Marai Mava Kuam Malol Hashmaitza Malay Ravina Marai Mar Ravina said to Marai Mar I love Haina Mas Nisan Isn't this our Mishnah? What's his Chiddush uh, over here? Isn't this implicit and clear from the Mishnah? Because the Mishnah said that if he someone throws something Latayich Dal and Amos Vin Is Galgal Chutz Ladal and Amos is potter Chutz Ladal and Amos Vin Is Galgal Latayich Dal and Amos. He's chayev. So if he threw it, Dalit Amis, and then the wind pushed it back in, then it says that he's chayev. And on that, And Rav Yechon said that 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 we say that if it was thrown you know, outside of Dalit Amis, and then the wind pushed it back in, he's chayev because it's considered to be that it was Munach in the place where it was Rav Yechonin says that it has to be that it was suspended in the air or it landed on something, but otherwise we don't say that it's considered Munach. So isn't that clear from the Mishnah and the way Rav Yechonin explains our Mishnah that there has to be a Hanoch al Gabi Mashu. The Mishnah says that if he threw outside of Dalit Amas and then the wind pushed it back in, he's Chayev. That's only, however, according to the way Rav Yechonin explains it, if there was a Hanacha. So isn't this clear from our Mishnah? Amalei, no, it's not, because Amalei, Misgalgal, Kamran, you're talking in the case where it's rolling. Misgalgal ain't soifel anuach. Over there, it's not ultimately going to land on this spot. Over there, it's pushed, the wind is pushing it in, and it's being pushed and swaying back and forth. So it's not ultimately going to land on the spot. So I might have said Dafka over there in order to be considered Munach, it has to be Hanoch al Gabi Mashu, or it has to be suspended in the air. Aval Hai came in the Seifel Anuach, Aval Gabdalai Nach, Kimanda Nach Dami. But I might have said over here, if something is now in its descent, it's about to land on the ground, I might have thought that. In such a case where it's inevitably going to land on the spot, that once it's reached within, within three of the three tefachim of the ground, I might have said that it's already considered munach. It should be considered munach already at that spot because ultimately it's going to land on the spot on the ground and it's within three of the ground. I might think in such a case it's already considered to be munach even if it doesn't land on Aziz Mashu. Kamash Malan, that even in such a case where it's Seifalan Nuach, we still say, no, according to the Rabbanon, it has to have land on something. It has to land on something of substance. It can't, just because it's within three tefach of the ground, we would not at that point consider it to be munach. Now, of course, it makes enough kamina that if it's already considered, if you would have said that it's considered munach when it reaches within three tefach of the ground, then a person, if he at that point, if he then realizes that he is, if he realizes at that point that he is over on the malacha, then it's too late. He is already considered to be done the malacha, and he's chay v'chatos because he's already the malacha is complete. However, if we say that it's not considered muach until it hits the ground, if it's within three tefachim of the ground, then he realizes the avera 
then it's not safe for Bishkaga, then he would not bring a chattis in that case, and there's other enough caminas as well. But like Hoponi, we were saying that even if it's safe for Lanuach, it still needs a Hanoch al Gabe Masho. Dr. Mishnah Zarek Biyam Arbaham is part or if a person throws Dalit Amas Bashus Arabim is high. If he throws the yam dalar amas in the yam is pot because the yam, a body of water, has a din of a karmas. It doesn't have a din of Rishus Arabim, it has a din of a karmas. It doesn't have a din of Rishus Arabim, and there's a discussion in the before why is that so? I mean, even if there's travel and ships travel through there, but one teretz is is that it's not Daimla Digle Midbar. Traveling on water is not the way they travel in the Midbar. So therefore, it's not considered to be Rishos HaRabim. Magad Ram says because it's not Nicha Tashmishle in the same way as traveling on the ground is. But al Kopanim, it is not considered a Rishos HaRabim. It's not considered Rishos HaYachid either. So this is a much uh, subject of much uh, discussion in the Paiskim. Al Khaira, there are the banks of the body of the water. The depth of it is if it's 10 Tvachim deep and you have the banks that around uh, surround it, so why should it not be Rishus Yachid? It should be considered surrounding an area that's surrounded by Mechitzas that are 10 high. There's different explanations in the Meforshim. Some say because the banks are not steep enough, and some say even if they are steep, but nevertheless, there is not, the person is not aware that he's in a closed area. It's a, the area is in the, in the body of water, so he doesn't see the enclosure and he doesn't feel the enclosure. A Cholponim, a Yam is considered a Karmas. It's not a Rishos Arabim, it's not a Rishos Yach, therefore a Zerik be Yam Arba Amas of a person throws Dalit Amas on the body of water as opposed to in a Rishos Arabim where he'd be Chayev, here he's Potter. Im Hayurakak Mai Rishos Arabim Mahalachos boy, if it was a pond. And the the people, the public, travels through it. Then, if they travel through it, it's considered to be Rishus Arabim. And therefore, if he throws Dalit Amas, he's Chayim. What is, what is the dimension of the Rakak, the pond, that we would say that it's considered to be Rishus Arabim if people travel through it? Only if it's less than 10 Tvachim deep. But if it is 10 Tvachim or more deep, even if the public does travel through it, it's not a Rishos Arabim. A Rishos Arabim the, does not extend in a height higher than 10. Then the Mishnah seems to say uh, a statement which is repetitious, which was mentioned before. The Gemara is going to deal with it. Again, the Mishnah says, Rakak Maim Rishos Arabim If you have the pond of water and the public travels through it, Azarek Besaycha Dalen Amas Chayev. If one throws Dalit Amas and there is Chayv, it's considered a Shusha Rabbim, and the Gemara will explain why we need this statement, which seems to be redundant. Dr. Gemara Amar Laho, Merabana Larova, Bishlam, Hiluk, Hiluk, Trezimna. The Mishnah mentions that Rab Mahalech's boy. So it mentions it twice. So that, that it mentions Rab Mahalech's boy, that we understand why we need it. Because it's teaching us that even though people walk through it, this is not the normal way of travel, and it's not easy and convenient. Nevertheless, if they walk through it, that's considered hiluch, and it's considered rishus rabim. But tashmish tashmish. So it's emphasizing ram boy that they walk through it. So if they walk through it, even though it's not. Uh, it's not nicha tashmishim, even though it's al yadehatchak. But nevertheless, notwithstanding that, it's still considered a rishus But if it's tashim shal yadehatchak, if they use it but not easily, if you have a pit, a bore that is nine deep, and people have to bend down to put their articles on it, as opposed to if you have a post which is nine high and the people can put their loads on it, it's used by the public. In, it's not al yadayat chak. That's a Rishul Sarabim, but if it's deep and it's al yadayat chak, it's usage, it's not walking, it's usage that's al yadayat chak, then that is not considered a Rishul Sarabim. Even though Tashmish, the usage of the Rishul Sarabim, makes it a Rishul Sarabim, but not al yadayat chak.
So it's emphasizing that it's dafke hiluch aliyadet chag shmei hiluch. Walking, even though it's aliyadet chag, it's not easy, but that's hiluch and it's rishus. But tashmish aliyadet chag loish mei tashmish. But ella rakak rakak treizim the lomali. But why does it have to repeat? It says rakak mayim again. It says that this that if it's a pond of water. And it says that there's a pond of water that the people walk through. Why does it have to emphasize twice that it's a rakak mime? So it's coming to teach you lomali chad bi maizacham chad bi maizacham. It's coming to teach you that this din exists, this condition exists, whether it's in the summer or in the winter. Utsriche, and I need them both. Titana chada. If it only mentioned it once, hava mina hanim lemiyosachama. I might have thought that this is only in the summer. That if they walk through this pond, that it's considered the rishus harabim. Davidi nish the maskila kura nashaya. Because people sometimes will walk through the water to cool off. So therefore, I would consider it to be the rishus harabim. Avli moisak shamim. But in the winter when it's cold then I would say that people don't use it enough. It's not used in a, 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 in frequently enough or in a way that it's convenient enough. And loy, and I might have thought it's not considered a Rishu Sarabi. So it has to tell me that to include the case of the winter time. If I only knew that in the winter it would be considered Rishu Sarabi, I would say they came with the mint because since anyway, in any event, their clothes are getting dirty from the mud and the rain in the winter, so it doesn't bother them to walk through this pond, and they will walk it through enough with enough frequency, and it's considered to be a normal enough use for them to be Rishu Sarabi. But in the summertime where the clothes are not getting dirty, I might have thought, Loy, I might have thought that this usage is not considered a usage that will make it a Rishul Sarabi. So that's why it says it twice to emphasize that it does not matter what the season is, it's considered Rishul Sarabi regardless. Abayam or Yitzrech, he says a different reason why I needed both. I might have thought then that's only if the pond is not Taladamas. Then I would say people walk through it and use it but if it's so large that it's Daladamas, I might thought that I think that they won't go through it with enough frequency. They'll go around it and therefore it's not considered the usage that it's walked through by the Rabbim and it wouldn't be considered a Rishosa Rabbim Kemash Malan Rakak regardless whether it's less than Dalai Ramas, whether it's more than Dalai Ramas, still, if it's used and people would walk through it, it's considered to be Ereshul Sarabim. Ravashi Omar, Ravashi gave a different terats. Ravashi Omar Yitzrich, I need to teach the following. I might have thought that that, what we say that the public passes through, it's considered Ereshul Sarabim, it's considered a thoroughfare. That's only if it's more than for Tvachim. But if the pond is so small that it's not even for Tvachim, I might have thought, I might have thought that people jump over it and they won't walk through it with enough frequency to be considered the Rishul Sarabim. Kamash Malana says, Rakak, twice, it wants to emphasize why does the example, the Mishnah given an example of Rakak two times and not use another case to emphasize that the Rakak, it doesn't matter even if it's a small, if it's big, it still has the same din. And this that we say over here that the people, even though sometimes they jump over it, it's still considered If a person throws something and it lands on a plank, if you have a, a bridge, if you have that has planks and there's one plank that is out of place, and it's not lying flush with the other ones, and there's a gap, and it's a um, it's a not uh, on the same level as the other planks, and it's separated from it. And nevertheless, a part, someone throws on it, mechayev. We still consider it to be the rishus harabim, sharei rabim boy kim boy, because people do travel enough. Meaning, you might have thought they'll just jump over it and they won't walk through it. So kamash malan did no. That even in such a case where it's they could jump over it, 
But nevertheless, we say uh, that they do walk with enough frequency, and it's considered to be Rishus Rabim and his Chayv. Because, and uh, the way Rashi is learning it is because many people, even though some people could jump over it, many people will still walk over it even though there's a gap, even though it's a higher elevation than the other planks, that many people will still walk over it, and therefore it's considered the Rishus Rabim. And he, we see Ravashi Latamei that here also, even if the pond is less than four Tvachim, and some people would jump over it, but enough people, many people will walk through it, it's still considered Rishus Rabim. This is Rashi Shita, that to be the Rishus Rabim, it's because people, many people will walk and uh, walk uh, on it or through it, and it's Rosh Hashanah Rav. And Ram seems to be learning that the point of Rashi is, is that even though they will jump, and they do jump, and even if most people do jump, nevertheless, this is still considered the normal use of the thoroughfare of the Rabim, and still, therefore, still considered Rosh Hashanah Rav. The Rashi is learning is because at the end of the day, many people will not jump, and they will walk through it. Dr. Mishnah has a recommend a yam liyabosha. So as you said, the yam is considered a karmalus. So therefore, if a person throws from the yam to the yabosha to the land on the side, which Rashi says is a rishus harabim, <coughs> umini yabosha yam, or from the bank, which is a thoroughfare from the rishus ram to the yam, so it's from a rishus ram to a karmalus, umini yam lesvina, or from the yam to a svina, to a Karmalus to Rishus Yochid, the ship is considered Rishus Yochid. Uminas Vinu Liyam, or from Rishus Yochid to the Karmalus, Uminas Vinu Lachavetza, or from one ship to the other. From They're both Rishus Yochid, from one Rishus Yochid to the other potter. In all these cases, it's potter because there's no transferring from Rishus Haram into Rishus Yochid, or vice versa, so he's potter. Svinas Kshura Zubazu, if you have two ships tied together, Metal Tomizu Mizu then you can carry from one to the other. Then you can, but in, in uh, Enan Kshuras, if they're not tied together, even though they're next to each other, then you can't be metal from one to the other, because you can't be metal from one to the other, because there is a separation of the caramelas in between them. So, now they can be metalto from one Rishusi Yochi to Rishusi Yochi and from different Rishusi Yochi and you can be metalto um, that you can be metalto from the Ali Day Erev Chatseris. And the Gemara was that's not in the case that it belongs to two different people. So to carry from a uh, Rishusi Yochi from one ownership to another ownership, the Rabbanan required a, a Ruve Chatseris that you have to make an Erev to join it together because otherwise it has an appearance you're transferring from one Rishus to another and people get confused with Rishus Aram and Rishus Yochi. An Erev Chatseris is required. So if they make an Arab Chatseras, if the ships are tied together, then it's valid. But if they're not tied together, then there's a separation of the Karmelas in between them. That is Mevatal the Arab. Dr. Gemara Itmar Svina, Ravuna Amar Matsina Minas is called Shomimala. If a person wants to draw water from the Karmelas, from the water, from the body of water, from the Yam to the Svina, and as we said, the Karmelas, the Yam is a Karmelas. The Svina is a Rishos Yochit. It's also from a Rabbanan to transfer from a Karmel to Yochit. How can he draw the water? So Rabbanan says all he has to do is put out one little post, one little tiny plank, and then he can now draw up the water, and he draws the water by virtue of that plank. So as Rashi was saying, we'll see in the Gemara, this is really only for a hacker. This is really not necessary. This is only for a hacker, <coughs> so people should not think <laughs> that you could transfer from a Carmelist to a Rishosiyah. So we'll see. Rav Huna, Mar Maitzir Menes is called Shumimal. Rav Chista, Rav Bar Rav Huna, Amri Oisa, Mokamar Boamimal. They say no, that's not sufficient. You have to make a a area. <coughs> you have with Mechitzas surrounding an area four by four. According to Rashi, the Mechitzas are minimal Mechitzas, so you make four boards that's surrounding an opening, which is at least Dalet al Dalet, and you draw the water through that area. So the rationale is, is that if you have the four sides, 
and you have an area of dollar or dollar surrounding the area dollar or dollar, we say good achas mechitza. We view the mechitzas as they come all the way down. So therefore, what you're drawing up is you're drawing from a. It's all a rishus yachid. <coughs> The Rishus HaYachid then, therefore, will extend all the way down so that the water that you're drawing is water not from a Carmelist to Rishus HaYachid, it's from Rishus HaYachid to Rishus HaYachid because the Mechitzas are surrounding an area that's Dalar al Dalar. We say good Aches Mechitzas, viewed Mechitzas as if they're extending all the way down, and that whole area becomes a Rishus HaYachid. That's Rashi Shita, that the mechitzas are minimal mechitzas. Tesis is that, no, it has to be at least 10 tefachim high to say the good aches. Now, normally on dry land, as we'll see in the Gemara, we will not say on a suspended mechitza good aches to come all the way down. But here, by the water, we will. And we'll see in the Gemara what the rationale is. So that's the machlegas over here. So they say that oisem makam arboa umemala. So what's the machlekes? Rav Huna, Amar Maitzimen, is this called Shemamala? He says you just have to put out one little rod, just for a hacker. And your mamala, what's the pshan? Kasavar Karmelis Ma'ar Mashkem. He says when we say that the yam is a Karmelis, the Karmelis is on the bed of the river or on the lake. It's on the, the bed of the floor of the body of the water. So that's where it has the din of a Karmelis. Now you measure the height from that bottom. Vavira Makam Pator. Now if the height of the body of the water is ten, as we'll see in the Gemara, that the assumption is that the ship is traveling on a body of water that is at least ten deep. So therefore, the the water, the surface of this water is more than ten above the floor. So it's in the airspace of a Malkin Pator. So when you're drawing the water, you're not drawing water from the Carmelites. You're drawing water from a Malkin Pator to the Rishus HaYachin, which is Mutter. So Vavir Malkin Pator, Ubedin, who does this now loyally boy? So you shouldn't even need the Ziz. Eleki Hecha de la Havala But it's simply there for a Hacker, so people should not get confused and think that you could really uh, carry or transfer from a Carmelis. People may not realize that this is a Malkam Pator, so it's only for a Hekim. But Rav Chiesa, Rav Rav Huna, Amri, no, Oisa Malkam Marabo, Mimala, you have to make this area, the Mechitza surrounding an area of Fort Tvachim by Fort Tvachim, Kilsavri, Karmles, Mesas, Maimashkin. He says that it's the surface of the water that has a din of a karmel. So if you would draw water from the surface, from the top of the yam, that's drawing water from a karmel, which is also. So therefore, it says, So the water is, the, all the water is considered like one, it's, well, with the bottom of it, it's considered all one mass and just like the bottom is a caramelist, the surface of the water is a caramelist because it's considered just part of its one mass and it's all considered part of the, the floor of the, of, the, uh, of the body of the water. So Eloyovin Mokamar Bo, if you're not going to make these mechitzas, come at Altum Akaros Therefore, you have to make these mechitzas, and we say good aches, to consider this area a rishus and not a carmelis, because otherwise the surface of the water, just like the floor of the water is a carmelis, the surface is also a carmelis. And if you don't make this mechitza, you'll be transferring from a carmelis to rishus yachid. Well, they say that you only need is his kolshu zimnin to lek asara v'kamatav l'karos l'shu ziyachid. But the rationale, their rationale for saying you only need a ziz is because if there's a depth of the body of water is more than ten. So therefore, the surface of the water is ten more than 10 above the floor of the water, so therefore it's not a caramelous mock and patur. Well, let's say it's traveling, the ship is traveling in an area that the water is not 10 deep. So then it'll come out of Takola because if you only have a ziz, you're transferring from a caramelous or shusiyachid. Amar lei gamrina de insinam alech tvavhos ma'asora. Now we know that the ships do not travel in shallow water that's not 10 deep. So it certainly would be 10 deep and more than 10 deep, and therefore 
you don't have that issue. I fracturing more of a hamushi is like you have the in the front of the ship it extends up the above the surface of the water and that area yes the base of the ship is sunk into the water and it will not travel It'll make sure not to travel in an area that's so shallow because it's it's it's, immer it's submerged into the water and it would not travel in shallow waters but the area on the top the front part of the ship it now slopes up that's higher well maybe on that part of it the body of water is not 10 deep and it doesn't have to be 10 deep because that the prow extends up and it's elevated from the water and maybe the the depth of the water itself is not 10. the height of the prow is above the water it's more than 10 from the bottom of the of the water but the surface of the water itself the depth of the water itself perhaps is not 10 and then he will be taking from a caramelist no, they have the sailors that want, are ensuring, they want to make sure that the ship does not travel in such shallow waters, so they stand on the front of the ship with poles to make sure that the depth is at least 10 so that the ship does not end up traveling in such shallow waters and get stuck. So even the prow of the ship is going to be higher. It's not going to be in traveling above water, which is not 10 deep. So I'm a little of Nakhma Yeshul of Kia, Barabin or of Kisu, the Rabba Barakuna Dama Isamak and Marbom and Mala. Well, they say you make the Meshad, the Mechitzes, and you draw the water through this area, through the area that's the Mechitzes that are surrounding a space of Fort Fakim, Fort Fakim. So that's fine to draw up the water. But Sheikh Mandi Day, Hecha Sharilahu, what do you do about the wastewater? Now, if they hold that the surface of the water is a caramelize and you cannot draw up water from the surface well similarly you should not be able to pour out to dump the refuse into the, onto the water because that's also from Erishusiyachit to a caramelize how do they pour out where do they pour out the wastewater well perhaps you'll say that they throw it between those machitzas in the very same place no me silly that's me is to draw up the water and the drinking water, the clean water, through the same machitzas that you're pouring out the wastewater. More answers, no, it's not necessary. The shuttle of to the Sina. They pour it down the sides of the ship. It travels down the sides of the ship. And so it doesn't go directly from the Shusiyach to the Carmelis. It flows down the sides. I like it, but nevertheless, it's coming from his Kayach, even though it's not direct. It's not directly from the ship to the water, but it's through his pouring, act of pouring, it's flowing down the side, so it's considered his kaya. Where answer is no. Kaya and Bakarmalis like Gazru. They were not geyser in a Carmelis where the whole history is Rabbana, they were not geyser that if it's throwing al yadeh kayach, if it's indirect, it's only through kayach, they were not geyser. Like more, we'll discuss this further.